This video series is brought to you by StarCityGames.com. Visit us for all your Magic the Gathering needs. In this video, we'll be covering Jund in the M10 Elara Block in Zendikar Standard, the most popular standard deck by a wide margin. Let's see how it works. For creatures, many builds begin with Putrid Leech. A creature made to bring the beats is a 4-4 each turn by paying 2 life. Sprouting Thrynax is next, bashing for 3 and leaving a whopping 3 creatures behind in its wake. Moving upward is Bloodbraid Elf, a creature that not only has haste but gives you a free spell to boot thanks to Cascade. Siege Gang Commander has gotten more popular recently, as his ability to produce both a ton of damage and blockers is worth including. Lastly, most Jund decks run a few copies of Broodmate Dragon, a card that isn't solved by one removal spell alone and needs a board sweeper of some sort or some monster in the air to block it. On the spell side, the card you most want to flip off a of Bloodbraid Elf is Blightning. This spell does nasty things to people, often making them lose two important spells while Bloodbraid Elf has you bashing in for an additional three damage. Speaking of three damage, Lightning Bolt returned to standard in M10 for the first time since 4th edition, and pretty much every Jund deck is packing four of this awesome spell. Maelstrom Pulse is next, a souped up removal spell that can handle any type of card but land, including enchantments and planeswalkers. It's also fantastic against tokens, who all technically have the same name, or when your opponent plays another copy of a powerful creature. Terminate is a card that just kills creatures. That's all, nothing more, nothing less. Bituminous Blast is another staple, often destroying a creature while simultaneously allowing you to flip up all sorts of craziness including a Bloodbraid Elf to keep the Cascade Chain going. The final spells for the deck are often toss-ups, including the powerful Planeswalkers of Garrick Wildspeaker for his ability to make 3-3 beasts, or Chandra and Alar for dealing with Baneslayer Angels, opposing Broodmate Dragons, or just providing a surefire game win if given a few turns by herself. Sideboard options are plenty, most often including Jun Charm to kill small creatures at instant speed and Goblin Ruin Blaster to destroy your opponent's non-basic lands, a creature that is definitely important in the mirror match. Others include Malakir Blood Witch for her ability to both block and break through a Baneslayer Angel, more terminates when you absolutely positively must kill more creatures, and additional Maelstrom Pulses for dealing with those, well, hard to deal with permanents such as Planeswalkers or powerful artifacts. Master of the Wild Hunt has been seen in both sideboards and main deck as a way to slowly but surely grind your opponent's creatures to dust. And lastly, Mine Rot has gained a lot of favor in the mirror match, as the player who has the most cards in hand often determines the winner. It's also a fantastic flip from Bloodbraid Elf. This Jun build is from the StarCityGames.com Dallas 5K Open Series from January 2010. The deck list uses all of the cards I mentioned earlier. Also note the lands. Orin Reef the Vastwood is a pretty powerful land that can boost your Bloodbraid Elves, Sprouting Thrynaxes, and Garrick Wildspeaker Beast Tokens to nasty levels. I hope this overview has given you a little insight on how Jun works. Be sure to check StarCityGames.com for all of your Magic the Gathering needs.